get on this motorcycle and you hit that starter button and that engine starts to wind up and that fuel's ignited and all of a sudden you're sitting on top of a jet engine, literally, the sensation's indescribable. <laughs> In 1999, we're actually in the works of doing a uh, turbine-powered truck, and it came upon the idea of to uh, look at putting one in a motorcycle. We had a good customer that I mentioned it to in passing and essentially asked how much it was going to cost. I said, I didn't really know, and he handed me a blank check. Well, at that point, the gauntlet had been thrown down. We obviously had to put up or shut up. So they took a helicopter jet engine, some engineering know-how, and Ted's your uncle. I think the biggest advantage of having a turbine engine and a motorcycle is the fact that you have such a high horsepower to weight ratio. With 320 horsepower on tap and you know a mere 138 pounds uh, is the weight of the engine, it accelerates so effortlessly with this kind of power and the torque that it makes, the bike is literally just loafing its, most of its life. When you're riding down the road at 70 miles an hour and stab it, look down and all of a sudden you're approaching 200 miles an hour in the blink of an eye and the whole time the engine just seems to be getting happier and happier. Wicked. Jets are fast. The Y2K is an engineering marvel. MTT have taken an engine designed for a helicopter and wrapped a motorcycle chassis around it. But you can't buy jet fuel at your local filling station, so how have they got around this problem? This motorcycle runs on diesel fuel. And uh, when that fuel is ignited, that expanding gas then drives wheels that take that thrust and convert it to shaft horsepower. That enables to drive a transmission and subsequently a change to the rear wheel. We sell them with a 250 mile an hour guarantee of your money back. And to date, no one's asked for their money. We have one customer in Portland that was ticketed at 217 miles an hour for which he got to pay a $10,000 fine. I think he was more proud of that than the motorcycle itself. We were recently awarded a uh, certificate from Guinness for the most powerful production motorcycle as well as the most expensive. With a top retail price of $185,000, I think we had that covered without saying. But uh, some of the customers we have actually ride these things on a daily basis. In most cases, we get the cell phone salute. Everybody reaches for their cell phone and holds it out the car door or whatever, and you know you can imagine them saying, "You got to hear this thing," and it never ceases to steal anybody's thunder wherever it goes. Uh, the most exotic cars, the most beautiful women—it doesn't matter. When this thing rolls up, everybody's eyes are going to be on you. There we have it, three of the world's most exclusive bikes which most of us can only dream about riding. We defy anyone who sees a Confederate not to fall in love with it. Maybe that's its problem, it's just a bit too cool for its own good. Nope, we want a bike that wants to be ridden, not put on a pedestal. In the white heat of competition, the RCV211 is ridden harder than any other. The pinnacle of motorcycle technology and performance, but there's one huge problem, the Honda's not for sale. But the Y2K is. It's a bike with a jet engine, a machine that wakes the neighbours up by blowing out their windows and minds as you fly by at 250 miles an hour. It's the most outrageously exclusive bike, so in our book, the winner has to be the Y2K. <laughs>